infiltrating into Manipur. Now they have started claiming a chunk of Manipur territory to form a separate administrative unit, which is totally unacceptable um, by all other district people of Manipur. And that has created a situation now. And as you see, armed Kupi militants, both in the Sioux and outside the Sioux, they, you know, uh, shut off ethnic cleansing uh, in Surasanpur, Mori, and coming down to Torumala, up to Ho Chaukai, in the southern side, and in the distant western side, uh, particularly in uh, this thing, Ketanwandi area, and in northern side, in Dolai Thavi, uh, and then uh, near, near Biko, and when the village of Biko completely destroyed, burned down, and even uh, injuring, injuring women. So these rather uh, armed cookies attacking Metis, it's, uh, it was never thought of, but it has happened. And I said earlier that the cookies have committed a huge historical blunder by attacking the Maitis. Maitis have always wanted to live in peaceful coexistence with all the communities in Manipur. Now the trust is gone. And it is going to take a very long time to restore their trust and mutual love and respect for one another. We have always wanted to exist, respecting one another's distinctive identities and cultures. But that has been, I mean, compromised by the cookies, armed cookies attacking Métis. And about, you know, uh, the scenario is such that the emotion and sentiment are very high among the Métis population, particularly those affected, you know, the victims of this violence is very high. So even if uh, uh, the the thing uh, some sort of a semblance of peace uh, is brought about at the political level, it's going to take a long time to you know heal the wounds uh, at the level of public. So I think some people have already commented that there is no runout in Manipur right now, and the security forces, particularly some rifles, they're facing. Uh, you know, public complaints against them or siding with the cookie armed militants. And right now in Kachamanbi, this uh, skirmish exchange of gun fire is taking place. And there is a post that a samurai force is like, you know, protecting the cookies when cookies started the fighting. And they're using twin motors and all. One public, uh, one uh, distant uh, major wound is reported to happen in June and other casualties as well. So, uh, with all the security forces uh, airlifted to Manipur, about uh, 40,000, I don't see any sort of, uh, you know, law uh, uh, and order district being controlled properly. Well, uh, <coughs> the Indian government uh, has not been able to take a principled stand only uh, the commitment that Manipur's integrity will be uh, uh, will not be disturbed. That's all. That's that's the only uh, commitment you get from the union government. Uh, what sort of uh, distinct arrangements or solution they are thinking about is not yet in the public domain. Well, a lot of politics actually. Uh, politics uh, at different levels. In this thing, you know, the cookie uh, armed groups in the suspension of operations agreement. Uh, so, uh, the, the agreement was signed, the tripartite agreement was signed in 2008. Now, how many years? Well, almost 15 years into the agreement. And no forward this thing, movement of the agreement is seen right now. So, uh, the all along the cookie uh, groups have been given a free hand, uh, you know, staying in the designated camps. They have uh, only a, couple, a few arms in the designated camps and moving around freely with uh, weapons, arms. Uh, what is the intention of the government of India? It's very, very obvious that uh, the 
I would say the nexus between uh, the arm cookies and the sound rifles. I don't think it is just at the level of uh, the sound rifles deployed here. There must be something. It reflects a policy of, you know, the fighting rule in Manipur. And obviously, it seems that the security forces who have been airlifted into Manipur this time have been briefed uh, to protect the cookies and suppress the Nikis. It seems so. That is an example. Well, uh, there are a few groups uh, in the cookie, particularly. Uh, well, I want to send a message to them that uh, they must love Manipur and they must uphold the spirit of coexistence to the people of Manipur and they must accept the reality of the fact that even if the they are treated clean across the border in Japan. They, they should be treated as foreigners. Of course, they will be treated clean. But a foreigners are foreigners in a country. As so long as the international boundary is there and it should be respected, and from both sides, when they go from here to the other side of the border, uh, must be they must be going there uh, with some documents. And if any Burmese cookie come into Manipur, they must be treated as part. And the government, both this union government and state government, should do everything to save this cross-border movement of people.